You're listening to Seattle Real Estate Podcast. So in downtown Seattle, you can get some discounted booze, you can get some clothes, you can get pretty much whatever anybody else is willing to steal and then try and sell on a sidewalk in downtown Seattle in open view of anybody who walks past. Police probably know about it. Local officials probably know about it. It's, I mean, it's, it's pretty apparent from the photos that this is, this is a bazaar for stolen goods. It's from Jason Rance. I love Jason Rance's stuff because he kind of gives us an angle that uh, covers stories that other people are like, ooh, yeah, that doesn't paint Seattle in a very good picture. That's, that's, that's not good. That's, oof, those are tough topics. Homeless Bazaar selling stolen clothes and booze takes over prime Seattle location. There's some funny stuff in this one. We got to jump into this. This is pretty good. Jason, well done on this topic. Um, and, and I'm going to assume, I'm going to go out on a limb and say, I agree. It, pr- it appears that this stuff is stolen. Some of the explanation in this article, I think you'll find entertaining. This is pretty, cl- it's pretty clear what's going on. When you walk around with this stuff, you're like, oh, where'd they get the, oh, yeah, okay, yeah. If you can't prove it's stolen, though, why not just sell it on the sidewalk? You've got more visitors, looks legit. Why wouldn't it be? All right, before we jump on in, if you're new here, my name is Sean Reynolds. I own a couple of real estate companies, and I read the news. It's what we're doing. And why on a real estate podcast do we have stuff like this? Well, because it's interesting, and it kind of shows where we're at. Yeah. Public safety. Is that a thing impacting real estate? Let's see. Uh, Yes. Yes, it is. How many shootings did we have this weekend in Seattle? A bunch. How many people got killed? Like four. I mean, we are nowhere near Chicago's level. Chicago had, I think, 62 people get shot this past weekend. 12 murders, 11 murders, 12. It looks like 12. So public safety, that's a thing. And when you're selling, selling stolen goods in the sidewalk, mm, kind of tells you where we're at, right? Police just don't have time to deal with it. You're like, okay, we got other stuff we got to work on. Plus, there's just not that many of us. We're not going to be shutting people down. And we're just going to kind of keep, we're just going to do our thing and move on. COVID mandates resulted in nearly 150 Seattle businesses permanently closing. But as the Seattle economy finally reopens, residents and tourists have a new retail outlet to buy clothing and alcohol. That's a, that's an, that's a really good two-sentence intro because it kind of just sets the stage for, we've got this new opportunity that you as the consumer should take, care, take advantage of. It's a few blocks away from the Pike Place Market, throwing fish, pick up some clothes, pick up some discounted adult beverages. It's occupying prime real estate near Sub Pop Records and trendy restaurant Serious Pie and Shaker Plus Spear Sub Pop Records. Nirvana. That's all you have to know there, right? Nirvana. But there's a problem. Uh oh, Houston, we've got a problem. It's an illegal bazaar appealing mostly to homeless people. It sells what appears to be stolen goods. And the city hasn't done anything about it yet. Mm, is that shocking? No. One of the other stories I was going to read today, Mayor Durkin and Seattle Police Department, or Seattle Police Department, yeah, Chief Diaz, interim Chief Diaz, they're going to address the string of weekend Seattle shootings. They're going to address it. Hey, we had those. We're reimagining public safety. We're going to talk about it. We're going to think about it. Now, we don't have enough cops to really do anything about it to make the streets safer. But, you know, we're going to give it some good lip service and see what happens. So if, you, if you're a police officer and you're going to respond to a shooting, or if you're going to respond to a stolen goods being sold on the sidewalk call, it's pretty clear what's going on in Seattle, right? All right. And so the city hasn't done anything about it yet. There's a good video on Fox. Jason's explaining this. <laughs> I mean, just the fact that we have this going on. What, what is that? How come those things are all lined? Why do they have price tags on them on the side? Oh, I get it. Shop the homeless bazaar for all of your needs that seem stolen. 
The bazaar occupies the sidewalk along 3rd Avenue and Virginia Street in downtown Seattle near a busy bus stop. Didn't they just clear 3rd Avenue? I believe they did. Of the homeless encampments? This is, 3rd Avenue is known as Sketch City. It's just, it's been rough. And we talk about at the beginning of this article, we talk about all the businesses shutting down and being boarded up and the knuckleheaded protesters, um, you know, not quite so peaceful, just lighting crap on fire, graffitiing things up, just giving downtown a terrible look. Well, because we haven't been able to sweep out the homeless encampments, a lot of these tents have just been able to do their thing. We had a major, another crime ring, just, a, I think, a little bit further south than this. And they were selling all kinds of stolen goods out of a conglomerate of tents that I walked past last, I don't know, January, or February, something like that. Maybe it was January, playoff football. Can't remember. Um, but at this, at this new one, that's been here a while. You can buy jeans and shirts, some hanging from the fences that line a construction project. This is right where there's just a just a ton of construction. And in the photos, you can see in the background. All right, yeah, there's a crane. You know, yep, there's a, you know just fencing and names of projects and names of contractors. The clothing has tags on them. You can also purchase hats, gloves, and scarves. I would like a new scarf, please. What do you have in your selection? Looking for luggage? The bazaar has got you covered. They even sell laundry detergent. Now, I've had this conversation with a lot of folks. All right, laundry detergent. I know it's an economic good that everybody needs, and that's why it's locked up in inner city Walgreens and Targets. I know it's one of those items, but it's not necessarily small. It is, it's relatively expensive, I guess, right? But here, it's a, it's a commodity, right? Everybody needs it. It's a necessity. Um, even for homeless people, they need laundry detergent or whomever else. I Meaning you need your detergent to, to wash your clothes. Not going to work out well if you don't. So they even sell laundry detergent. So I found that common denominator really interesting that the illegal bazaar on the sidewalk sells everything all the way to laundry detergent. An array of alcohol lines the sidewalk that is well, that is as well stocked as most liquor stores. Okay, let's get into it. And Jason, this is where I think you outdid yourself. You identified the types of alcohol. The offerings include several different whiskeys, including Maker's Mark 46 bourbon whiskey, Maker's Mark, from what I understand, that's an expensive um, whiskey, right? I don't do hard alcohol because I drink it the same way that I drink beer, which is in quantity, and that doesn't seem to work out with hard alcohol. So I, I just I just don't. You know what I mean? A bottle of High West whiskey goes for around $20, according to the bizarre proprietor. That's quite a steal, literally, since a bottle normally goes for $70. That's some expensive booze. 70 bucks for a bottle. All right, that's some good. It goes down it goes down uh, smooth, right? And that's what you're supposed to say about about whiskey and bourbon and all that. So, this bazaar, it has better prices than Walmart. Got a little video here for those of you um, I mean, it's just it's right on the sidewalk. It's just right there. So, why hasn't the city moved on the illegal bazaar. It's illegal to set up an unlicensed retail establishment on a city sidewalk. Even in Seattle, there's a dig right there. It's a well deserved dig, though. Because in Seattle, it's kind of like, ah, this is just what we're doing. Anything goes. It's okay. You just let this happen. So, even in Seattle, it's illegal, especially when selling what is likely stolen clothing and alcohol. A listener to the Jason Rant show on KTTH rides the bus nearby for work and says she's seen the legal shops for weeks. In the photo she provided, you can see homeless people serving as customers. She suspects the items are stolen as well. So far, the city of Seattle hasn't cleared the homeless bazaar, even though the mayor's office was made aware of the news of the sidewalk nuisance. It was still there on Saturday. Across the street, homeless addicts lined the sidewalks harassing passerby. This is a street that is rough in downtown Seattle. This is a rough street. There's been a bunch of violence happened there, 911 calls on the regular. 
it's just, it's one of those streets. I walked it and I was like, okay, yeah, I'm going to pick up my pace. Let's do a little double time through this section because it had not been cleaned up yet. There was a bunch of tents at that time. It was rough and it's still rough. Not nearly as rough as City Hall Park, which should be, they need to put a parking garage on that bad boy. It's so bad and keep everybody out. It's, it, it is so, it's just overrun with hoodlum homeless people. So the mayor's office ignored questions on whether or not they supported efforts to remove the bazaar from the sidewalk. It's the response of an office that has given up on returning Seattle to a respectable city. Hmm. I got to kind of agree. City officials got their hands full because they don't have their hands around anything. They're just like, ah, right, we're just doing the best we can. We're going to reimagine. We're going to rethink. We're going to explore some options. We're going to spend some money. None of it will really work. But that's what we're doing. So we've literally got a bazaar. Um, <laughs> yeah, Jason Rance, a, a, a Twitter post. A friend sent this on a walk in downtown Seattle. Dude shooting up in full view. And she's complimented the gal shooting the video. I watched the video. Seattle is thriving. That's uh, Jason's. Uh, that's Jason's tweet. It is for the people selling stuff on the illegal sidewalk bazaar. It's doing well, doing well. Police took notice of the homeless bazaar on July fifth. This area is notorious for its high occurrence of narcotics and disorder crime including shoplifting and retail theft conspiracy to fuel the local street narcotics trade, an officer wrote in an incident report. Yep, that is what's going on. And it doesn't seem to be really getting any better, does it? We try and like physically clean it up. And it's just one of those streets where it's like it's the it's kind of the center hub for all that is wrong with a downtown area that has some excessive urban decay, right? I remember, where was I going? I think I was going, I think I was maybe going to the Pike Place Market. I found it, it was super busy. This was pre-pandemic. I was going there with my girlfriend and um, we parked in a garage that we knew was somewhat secure. We're walking around and I'm about two blocks away from Pike Place Market about to go past, um, there's a Columbia store, Columbia Sportswear, a Mountain Hardware. I used to buy a lot of that stuff when I was doing mountaineering. Good brand until Columbia bought it and then it became crappy. Um, but I remember on a sidewalk, it's probably probably Fourth Avenue, something like that. And I remember seeing a dude shoot up and right next to him was somebody doing a drug deal. And it's like, middle of winter, the dude doesn't have a shirt on. And in Seattle, that's a push. LA, middle of winter. Okay. San Diego, no problem. Seattle, that's a no go. And I remember the guy not wearing a shirt, middle of winter. And uh, thinking, holy cow, this is bra this is some brazen behavior. Nobody gives a rip about what we're doing in downtown. And this you know, treasure trove of discounted goods is a primary example of, ah, it's okay. Well, this is just, you know, commerce, emerging commerce. The officer says he noticed a bottle of whiskey, High West, retailing for around $70. When asked how much he sells a bottle for, the suspect stated, ah, around 20 bucks. All the bottles of liquor appeared to be sealed. None of the bottles had anti-theft devices. This seemed Odd, as the suspect was claiming to sell liquor, he purchased at a dramatic loss, the officer wrote. I asked again how the suspect received the liquor. The suspect stated that when the Belltown nightclub Amber went out of business, he spoke with the owner and bought the liquor in bulk at a steep discount of around $300 for dozens of bottles of liquor. All right, I am going to give criminal props for a story that is difficult to, nobody's going to go track that down. Hey, when you guys went out of business, nightclub owner of Amber, when you guys went out of business, did you sell a bunch of uh, booze to a homeless dude who's now selling it at a disc? You know what I mean? You just can't really track that story down. 
It's like not, it, it's not doable. Now, what goes through my mind is that I've, I've got a good friend, I just got off the phone with him not long ago, he's in Chicago visiting his kids. I asked him if he's going to Lollapalooza, because that is going to be a super spreader event. 100,000 people a day at Lollapalooza in Chicago, you don't think that's gonna, you know, no masks? Or no, 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 uh, you, you don't have to wear a mask if you're vaccinated. If you haven't been vaccinated, uh, you're okay. But once you get inside, you know, once you get past security, everybody's going to rip their mask off. It's Lollapalooza, folks. If you're not sure what Lollapalooza is, it was the 1990, was it 1994? The first Lollapalooza was put together by Perry Farrell of Jane's Addiction, one of the most underrated rock bands in American history, bar none. Dave Navarro, Perry Farrell, all those guys are awesome. And um, love me some Jane's Addiction. And, and some Porno for Pyros, for that matter. That's one of Perry Farrell's other bands. But the name Porno for Pyros, that's eh, a little weird. So is the music. Still pretty good. Jane's Addiction, eh, it's not far off of being, oh, that's cringeworthy. Why is it called Jane's Addiction? Don't know. No, it's, uh, that's kind of where they were at. But uh, my buddy Dan, who's, you know, in Chicago, not going to Lollapalooza, um... I've talked to him about what happens with booze at bars, and it goes back to the distributor. It's, you sell it back to your distributor, right? I mean, especially sealed up bottles of booze. That's what happens. But said police officer, he is out. Um, he's doing some, you know, he's trying to keep the city, the streets of Seattle safe. And if selling goods on the street isn't impacting public safety, you know, uh, this high relative to this high, and for those of you on the audio, I'm holding my hand up at various levels. If, if if you don't have those issues of somebody getting, you know, hurt, then you move on. That's what happens. Guaranteed with a bunch of this media, eh, they're probably gonna they're gonna look into this little bizarre and something will happen. So the offer, uh, officer explained to the suspect that selling liquor on the sidewalk is illegal. Uh, that's good. Uh, good, good. We had a talk. We had a father son talk, maybe a father to father talk. It's unknown. But there was no evidence to prove the alcohol was stolen. So the high priced liquor was not confiscated. Doesn't that violate liquor laws being sold without a license? I think it does. But if a cop, he doesn't care, he or she doesn't care. He recommended misdemeanor charges, but the case was not sent to the Seattle City Attorney's Office until after the Jason Ranch show on KTTH inquired about why the bazaar was allowed to operate. Here we go. A spokesperson for the Seattle Police Department explained that the case was delayed due to a backlog. The Seattle Police Department sends roughly 100 cases to the municipal court each day. But the spokesperson explained... Due to COVID and layoffs due to budget cuts, we have a backlog of approximately 2,000 cases waiting to be verified. So you might have this case go into effect, you know, get filed. It's going to be months. This, this bazaar is just going to keep on going. I mean, it, it, it's, it's phenomenal that this is where we're at, right? As a society, just a bunch of stolen stuff on the sidewalk being sold in the open, can't really prove it's stolen. You just keep letting her rip. So homeless markets aren't new for Seattle is the next section here. This isn't a new phenomenon for Seattle. Uh, Parks overrun with homeless people have turned into open air markets for months. The first time I saw an example of that, it was a dude who had a basically a used bicycle, um, you know, parts, tent encampment. And a lot of people are like, well, what's he going to do with all those bikes? Well, they're basically currency for drugs, right? That's what's going on. They're currency for drugs. And then people, you know, want to ask this guy, and I remember reading the article on a podcast way back in the beginning of the pandemic. Where did you get all those bikes? Somebody just came up and gave them to me. They just gave me these bikes, these brand new multi-thousand dollar bikes. They gave them to me out of the kindness of their hearts. You know, unless they're serial numbers that you run backwards and, you, you know, you try and figure out if they've been stolen or not. People don't report stuff as stolen. No way to really track it. 
So the Jason Rant Show on KTTH previously covered the Ballard Commons, uh, which homeless people turned into an illegal market that trafficked stolen goods like bicycles and drugs. Denny Park was knowing, known for selling narcotics. Now, I did videos, and there's videos on this channel, and if you're watching on the YouTube channel about Denny Park, I think, it was, I, think I did a before and after. It had like 60 tents in it, and it was just known for being loaded up. I, I walked the park during a big rainstorm, and the second I got outside, yeah, big hypodermic needle right in the mud. Yep. I mean, just yep. Last November, Como TV's Jonathan Cho also chronicled the underground economy that grew during the pandemic as the city of Seattle refused to intervene in growing encampments. With cops hamstrung by an antagonistic city council and the smallest deployable staff since the 1980s due to a mass exodus, officers haven't been able to do much. When the Seattle City Council and mayor's office gave the green light to the homeless to do mostly as they pleased, vowing not to sweep encampments or enforce most laws, these markets started to flourish. Shocking, I know. If you don't have any consequences for selling illegal goods, guess what's going to happen? You got it. They're just going to keep on a going until they don't. And since we're here in Seattle, you know, even if somebody gets caught, what's going to happen to that person? Nothing. Nothing. You might get a slap on the wrist, maybe a little misdemeanor. It's why people are stealing so much stuff. It's why people are shooting each other willy nilly, because they know there's really no consequences. Cops are spread too thin. These people are frustrated. They're doing their own thing. Oh, yeah, we're going to steal some booze. We're just going to steal it. You've seen the videos of how blatant the crime has gotten in San Francisco. I mean, literally, people walking out the door, just walking out the door. It's like they're um, you know, doing a big Costco run with your big thing and then just pushing the cart right out the door. Here we go. Don't pay. Don't stop. You don't need to stop. You don't have to pay. You just walk out nonchalantly to our waiting get a getaway car. You would think as life returns to normal, the city would be interested in cleaning up the downtown core. What one would think. I mean, I, I, I hope they do. But as the economy reopens, perhaps this homeless bazaar plays a crucial role in attracting tourists back to the area. Where are we going with this? Sure, they'll have to shop around the homeless people mulling around. But isn't a 71% markdown on quality whiskey worth the eyesore? If you're a bargain shopper, in your head, you might be, uh, I, I wouldn't say this out loud. Yeah, I'd probably buy one. I'd probably buy a bottle. I'd probably buy a bottle and give it to that one uncle who really loves his booze. You know what I mean? Just, just that one family, that family person, you're like, oh, yeah. If you can't tell that it's stolen, I buy it and... Yeah, 20 bucks? Jeez, why wouldn't I do that? I know you're thinking that because that's what I thought. And I don't even like hard hard booze. What if there was some good clothing there? No. Because then you then you become, and then, then in your head, you're like, I'm a reasonable person. I'm not going to go out of my way to buy stolen goods. And anything other than trying to lie to me about where these goods came from, that's probably, it's probably not going to work, right? Because we all know the deal. If it's on Third Avenue, it's down there. You got a bunch of homeless people running around. The goods are stolen. We all know it. There just aren't enough consequences in today's, you know, in today's Seattle for anything else to happen. Just keep doing it. It's okay. Yeah, you know, even if you get busted, you're just probably going to get a misdemeanor and you're, you know, have you been arrested for shoplifting or for any of these other charges? No. You're going to get a get out of jail free card. That's kind of how it's going. And we wonder why shoplifting is increasing in cities like Seattle and and Portland and San Francisco and in San Francisco to the point where was it Target or Walgreens is closing at six o'clock at night because their shoplifting after a certain hour is so off the charts bad. And they're closed. They've closed down seventeen, you know, Walgreens type stores in the downtown core. Why are you closing that store? Well, it was bleeding out money, and we couldn't control the shoplifting. So there you go. That's what happens. Crazy times, right? 
crazy times. And a lot of this has to do with making crimes that used to be actual crimes, now making them misdemeanors. Nobody cares. That's a misdemeanor. Proposition, what, 47 in California? Ah, uh, you, you know, that used to be a crime, but uh, we, we don't really call that a crime anymore. So here's where we are. Um, yeah. You decriminalized a bunch of stuff and you wonder why we're here with, you know, illegal goods being sold on the sidewalk in downtown Seattle openly. Because that's how you get there. It's a it's a point A to point B to point C to point D. It's pretty clear. And yet our, our elected officials are like, ah, we don't really this. Whew. We're gonna have to reimagine and rethink how to how to get our hands around this one. Because wow, some stuff going on. It's a big city. We don't worry about it. That's kind of that's 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 my takeaway is that we talk about it. And we look at it, we condemn it. We do not believe in stolen goods being stolen on the sidewalk. But then again, we're also not really going to do anything about it. Therefore, let her rip. And that's where we're at. I will follow up with this one because this, this one should get a little news when uh, when this gets shut down. Because all those people buying whiskey at 71% discount, they're going to be pissed. They're going to make a stink. Where's our illegal stolen goods bazaar? What happened to it? Thanks so much for the rest of you for listening, watching me smacking the microphone. I'll catch up with you guys soon. Until then, stay safe. We'll talk soon. Bye. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell so you'll know when our next video is out.